What's up, everybody? It's your favorite This Magic Moments. Favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Mastermind Creations Assaultus, their take on an Ocular Max supposedly styled Bruticus, which resembles more a G1 Bruticus, with the exception of the color tone of Onslaught himself. The whole set's on loan to me from Joel W. He's been a tremendous resource and asset to me with this set and many other things. And he leaves no stone unturned. In fact, he included a whole list of notes on how to successfully exchange the shoulder ratchet, which I have done in part thanks to his help. I want to add this to the general conversation as it may be of some help to you if you bought this set. He says the instructions only highlight removing the four screws on the shoulder to access the piece, but doing just that will likely end up with a stress joint around the pin that holds the inside flat. The tools he used was a small kit that's designed for watch band link removal, and he included them just so you could see as a visual aid what it came with a little 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 stuff here like a little tiny channel locks and um, a little hammer and a pin so if you want to definitely maintain the structural integrity without any potential risk of stress mark added to your plastic he advises to remove the pin which he already did for me so that i could just rock and roll so the ratchet has been replaced and with that being said i think we can put this bad boy together and it's been a while man it's been a while since i put together a combiner i feel like especially a masterpiece scale one so i'm really looking forward to it plus i feel like this is going to lead to a lot of conversation um i'm sure most of which will have people trying to drag me but that's fine i can handle it but we'll see time will tell so let's go ahead and get started open up the hood on swindle and then kind of have onslaught perpendicular slide it in and then down over top of the bumper piece and then bring the toe around that'll grab onto the front of swindle with these two pegs here clipping in for brawn it's the same thing except you don't even need to lift anything up you can adjust the turret to give yourself some space to access the front pegs once again, slide onslaught in, bring the leg up, and then take the toe, wrap it around, and plug it in to secure it. Then you have onslaught shoulder piece. There's a little tab here. If you flip it up, it'll raise that little notch. That will allow you to insert vortex all of the way, and then you can close the notch back up. Same thing for blast off, little notch, get the arm in, close the notch, you're good to go. I'll get it cleaned up, we'll take a look at it. All right, so let's move through articulation. And the head, once again, looks great. It has the silver paint throughout, and then it has the red lens. And as you move the head, I can't really figure out what's doing it. I'm sure there's something that does it. But as I move the head, it's just lighting up the eyes. Like, it is on a timer, and I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like without any lights so i mean it's bright it's a nice light you know for the eyes for sure i just i'm not exactly sure what's triggering it i can't remember whether i had problems with it before but um yeah regardless articulation wise you get up to there down a little bit hardly anything and the swivel because it's on a hinge swivel which is fine once again, a, a combiner is better to look down than it is to look up because it should be looking down at the audience as opposed to looking up at the audience. It's just my opinion on how that should work, but there you go. For the shoulders, we actually have this ratchet here to get you up to just about nine. It's, it's not the articulation, it's the bulk of the shoulder that's stopping it. I can back out a bit. And then down, you get 360 around, no issues there, no butterfly, obviously. You, on the sh arm itself, you get the double jointed elbow for a great range of motion, plus the bicep swivel, so no issues there. And then the fingers are all individually articulated at the base knuckle and secondary knuckle and tertiary knuckle. The thumb is on a hinge at the base that comes up to a ball peg to two extra hinges, so fully articulated fingers that work great with no problem. It has that swirly plastic for the hands. Um, you, you, I, I don't mind it generally, but people feel a way about it. It's up to you um, and your preference base as to how that's going to suit you. Now, because this is a combiner, it is worth looking at the other arm and not good enough to say uh, same as the other side. So we have the new system here. Um, 
works well to get the arm up. You run into the same problems as the bulk of the arm, though. It's not the issue of the, um, you know, of the, of the engineering. It's just the design of the figure. And then you have the 360. Now, with this new ratchet installed, it works much better, but it's you know it's super tight so it has a tendency as you saw to kind of unplug everything as it's working arm wise and I think we've already talked about this but if you get these flaps up you get the double jointed elbow they get you a great run I don't know why this is there it is just a little tight and actually you might need to open up these two these side little hip skirts here uh, in order to really get that range yeah so this one doesn't work as well as Vortex pretty much in any way, shape, or form, but you know how I feel about this figure. And then we have a wrist swivel, same as the other side. It is limited, and unfortunately, it's more limited to the outside than to the inside. I don't know if the one's necessarily better than the other, to be fair, but you know that's, that's part of the cost of the all-in-one, right? You get the waist swivel. You do have to get the backpack out of the way a bit. But that's okay because you do have an ab crunch that's great gets you almost all the way over fantastic range there and the hips now the hips unfortunately are another issue of mine they are a bit loose so we have a a ratchet here that doesn't hold the weight of it and we have a ratchet here that doesn't really hold the weight of it either and unfortunately both of them working together to not work uh, causes for a bit of a frustrating experience regarding balancing the figure and also getting him stable now forward and back same kind of deal not as bad you do get a good range forward and you do get a good range back and it's not as much a problem because it doesn't really have anything to do with the stability of the figure it's just going to be used for posing right and when you have him posed you're not going to have his foot up in the air so ultimately it'll work fine there uh, the bigger issue is the out to the side movement not that you would have his leg up and out of the way out to the side But that's what kind of gives him a little bit of like the wobble de wobble de drop drop it like it's hot You do have a thigh swivel that works well enough limited in range, but you shouldn't need any more than that That should work very well. Yeah, the single knee here that gets you 90 degrees um, It doesn't hold once again, which which again just adds to the kind of lack of stability of the figure uh, it's not necessarily a deal breaker when you have him posed. It's just when you're kind of maneuvering him about, he has a tendency to kind of wobble about. Um, and then Swindle's the same, but he holds much better because he's a lighter figure. So there's not much of an issue regarding the, the weight there. Ankles, you get a toe tilt down with Swindle and a toe tilt up. And then you get the rocker. It is limited, but it should get you pretty much any real stance that you would put this guy in for a display. Um, and it's the same for brawn or brawl you get the toe tilt down the toe tilt up and the rocker that's limited but it is there now I got to kind of put him back together not that he's falling apart um, except a little bit has up there with the shoulder where the where the ratchet was and stuff but let me clean him back up and we'll take a look kind of overall at the combiner and now I feel like we can kind of talk about it a bit more freely without having to wor worry about the articulation. <laughs> so let me talk about the couple things that I, that, you know, were concerning to me early on, and that is the proportions. I will say I have to eat my words on that. For a non-parts forming combiner, this is probably the best proportion one I've ever seen. Now that's not to say that I'm absolutely in love with the proportions, I'm not. Oh God, please don't fall. But it is to say, I think for the approach that they took, it's surprisingly good regarding it. It doesn't look too skinny in the waist to me. It doesn't look too out of control, thick in the hips to me. It doesn't look too skinny in the thighs to me. These are all things that usually bother me with non-parts forming combiners. This one doesn't really do any of those things. And for that, I applaud them. It is surprising. It looks better in hand than it does in photos, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what else. The color situation is just one of those things, right? Onslaught is a blue bot and Bruticus is a gray one. You had to decide what's important to you regarding color and tune accuracy and all that kind of stuff and make that decision for yourself. And there's nothing to prevent you from taking a paintbrush to this thing if you know what you're doing. Stuff that bothers me about the individual bots, like lack of paint and stuff like that, with the exception of Blast Off, ironically, as predicted, doesn't really bother me when it's combined. There's enough color breakup and enough that kind of interesting things going on that it doesn't really bother me. So this isn't final thought. So I'm not gonna let loose on my issues here if it doesn't necessarily relate to kind of the overview of this thing Now let's take a look at it from the back 
Once again, pretty clean. Stuff does tend to come unnotched and unpegged down at the bottom with the feet and everything. That's because of the stability issues that this thing does have. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's not the best either. But overall, pretty clean job from the back, so to speak. Size comparison wise, real quick, there it is next to Zeta Toy Superion. Now, as you can see, they don't scale well. They're, they'll never fit right. You have to decide what kind of scale is best for you. The better comparison here, I'm not going to compare this with the Zeta Toys one. It's it's really, it's just not worth it. They're, they're not competing for the same space. What would be a good comparison is this first, the Unique Toys one, but I don't have the Unique Toys one anymore. But that would probably be worth looking at if you could put those two side by side. But there is something else interesting here that I want to talk to you guys about, and that is that I heard that the X-Trans bots, when they upgraded the trailer or they made the changes to the trailer, whatever the design changes were, that it was now going to put him at 50 centimeters. 50 centimeters is approximately 19 and three quarter inches. So that's going to be just a little shorter than the Zeta in an A stance, to be fair. But, you know, it'll be out of scale with him. So it won't even scale with him. He's really in a scale all his own for better or worse, which I, I get the impression that MMC doesn't really care. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not really thinking about their competitors or their contemporaries. They're more so concerned with their sort of line and stamp on things. So I don't think that they're aiming to like fit your collection. They're aiming to fit their collection. That's the impression I get from them, but both with reformatted and with Ocular Max. So it doesn't necessarily surprise me that he doesn't really fit with a lot of the current standards to include the Zeta, to include what the fans toys is shaping up to be, to include what it looks like the X-Trans bots is shaping up to be to include what DX9 is doing also to include with Kang Toys is doing size wise so everything kind of points in one direction bar this and Unique Toys but I don't even think Unique Toys is participating anymore at least under that flag but yeah I think this is a worthwhile thing to look at and for purchasers or consumers rather this is a worthwhile thing to really think about in terms of what you're doing and what you want to do and there's no wrong answer there it's a matter of personal preference but take it into consideration and also there, the two of them are with like a car bot, like a masterpiece car bot to kind of give you an idea, which I think is fair, like a fair thing to judge and base things off of. Final thoughts wise, we got to start with the negatives and the negatives are that for one, it's not very stable. In an A stance, you'll be fine. Anything beyond that, not really. I know you're saying, well, look, you have him in a pretty good stance there, and you're right. And I spent a lot of time getting him into that stance. And here's another thing about it. I'll just move this out of the way. Um, the backdrop is what's actually keeping him balanced. Hopefully this will give you a little bit of an idea as I try to move him away, what you get to deal with. So there it is. That doesn't work. Back heavy, back heavy. Back heavy, knees fail. So you kind of have to keep him, it's just there. So that that's it. But I'll tell you, it's not a great looking pose. Um, it's the one I had in the beginning is far better just from how, um, you know, dynamic it was. This looks like a little bit more awkward. Like he's not used to doing this pose. And the, that only is there, so there's a there's a plus and a minus to this. This is only an issue because there's so much engineering in here that lends itself to a very well articulated combiner. The way they did the arms, the way the waist swivel and ab crunch and all of that works, the range that he has at the knees and how everything stays together lends itself to a lot of great articulation. But when you actually go to utilize that articulation, you're gonna have a hard time getting him to be balanced. It's not impossible. And as you can see, I've got something here, but it's not easy. I'm not lying. I have nothing to gain from lying. The problem here is stability of the joints in the knees, stability of the joints in both hips, the thigh joint of the hip and the hip joint of the hip in unison with the little feet. All of those things working together creates balance issues for this dude. Okay, off that. And he's shooting his hand right now, by the way. There are a number of things that come unplugged and such as you're manipulating this guy, but that's kind of par for the course with combiners. The parts that I've noticed are like the flaps here on his thighs. 
the feet come unplugged. And once again, the upper body stays pretty well done. But I will also say that the hips and stuff had a tendency to kind of move out of position as well. I'll also say that we're just to get back on the balance thing real quick, because it is an issue. What I've had luck with in doing this and doing some pictures and stuff is sometime untabbing the back of the heel and using the heel with full motion to kind of help stabilize the front. It, it's not super well done in that regard, which brings us to our last bit. You know why it's not super well done in that regard? Because the feet are little. You know why the feet are little? For the all-in-one. You know why some of the robots don't look great? For the all-in-one. You know why some of the robots sacrifice articulation? For the all-in-one. This thing sacrifices an awful lot for the all-in-one gimmick. I've said it from the beginning. It proved to be true surprisingly in ways I didn't even suspect, namely that of balance and stability. Also, as a result of that, you sacrifice articulation in the wrists and you sacrifice articulation in the ankles, which is only unfortunate because this figure is so well articulated. Also, you sacrifice potential ratchets in the ankles that would have helped stabilize the figure. But I digress. The gun is little too. <laughs> it is. It's little. But that's all I got for negatives. So to the six people that haven't ran off to the boards with their pitchforks, yeah, I got good news. I don't hate this thing. I don't hate it at all. In fact, I think it's pretty good. As a display piece and almost as a, um, as a gimmick piece, as a, like a niche piece, as a, I don't even know, like conversation piece. They did it. They made five robots that turned into Bruticus and not a parts forming piece in sight. They did it. No one else has really, not of, of this magnitude anyway, that looks this good. There's something to be said for that. There's something to be commended for that. And don't think that's lost on me. It's not. The materials feel good. The hardware is where it suffers, but the materials feel good. The articulation is stellar. So stellar, in fact, that it ends up aggravating aggravating you for the negatives we just discussed, but really well done. And there's enough kind of color breakup, plastic breakup, etc., where you don't realize the lack of paint that this thing sort of has across the board. They did it. But now it comes down to do I recommend it. And here is the thing. I don't think I recommend it for the Masterpiece Collection because I don't think it really works. However, I recommend it, and I'll tell you why. I recommend it on the strength of the novelty. This thing took five robots, didn't use one extra piece, and gave you a Bruticus. And not just any five robots, and not just any Bruticus. Five robots that look good. Yes, I have my issues with some of them, but when I have my issues with them, you have to take into account. I have issues with them standing in as masterpiece robots, and you should too. But they're still better than a ton of other onslaughts and blastoffs that have come before it. They gave you five vehicle modes that look great. In fact, if if I were to do vehicle modes of this set, this would probably be the one that I would get for a two hit combo. Set of vehicles and the novelty. Third, they gave you a Bruticus that looks good from top to bottom. It's a good looking Bruticus. You can nitpick about things and trust me, I do, but it's not lost on me that overall it's a good looking Bruticus. And they did it without adding in one plug in hand. They did it without adding in one plug in foot. They did it without adding in one plug in pelvis and thigh piece or head. They did it and that counts. That's a win. But in my my opinion you have to view it kind of as a one-off thing the novelty the all-in-one combiner that was done and done fairly well do I think that all of it would have been better had they not done that yes yes I do and I'll say that to the day I die do I think at the end of the day this is still pretty good and super impressive for what it is and what it does and what it accomplishes that's never really been done before you're right. No, I'm right I do don't think it's lost on me it's not it's a tremendous achievement for the novelty but as a masterpiece Bruticus you might find it to be a bit lacking the two things are not mutually mutually exclusive. That being said, shout out to Joel for letting me take a look at this, sending me instructions, tons of tidbits, extra help, etc, etc, etc. It's appreciated. And with that, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.